Wow. 20 years. And it is also Mr. and Mr. Hewitt's, <laughs> Mr. and Mr. Mr. and Mrs. Hewitt's 38th anniversary. There we go. Hey, wait a minute. Hold on. I, I specified the, the Sex Pistols version of this. That's this. Oh, wow. Wow. Well, a a anyway, I am honored to be here as the guest host on the Hugh Hewitt radio program from the Relief Factor studio here in beautiful Southern California. I'm Kurt Schlichter. I'm the senior columnist at townhall.com. I am a retired United States Army colonel. I am a noted Los Angeles trial lawyer, and I am the author of this. If you're watching on the universe, you can see it. The 21 li Biggest Lies About Donald Trump and You. Just out from Regnery. You should go get it. I may mention it once or twice per Mr. Hewitt's admonition to do so. But I'm, I'm, just, uh, I'm just very excited to be here on this anniversary show because, uh, like you, I, I am a dedicated Hugh Hewitt listener. I've been listening since probably right near the beginning, if not the beginning of the, the, the age of Hugh Hewitt, the Hugh Hewitt generation, Generation Hugh. And um, uh, the first time I actually met Hugh was I was the commander of the uh, First Squadron, 18th Cavalry, in the California Army National Guard, and they located in various places uh, in the Inland Empire and elsewhere. And it was a recon surveillance target acquisition battalion. We would uh, uh, operate ahead of the line, spotting the enemy and doing stuff. And we wore Stetsons, and we had what was called the Cavalry Ball. And in 2007, I thought, well, who, who should we have as a guest? And I said, well, let, let me try Hugh Hewitt. And Hugh showed up. And uh, we create something in a, you know, a, a Stetson, uh, a mixture of various potent potables, uh, to use the Jeopardy term, uh, called the Cavalry Punch. Uh, cavalry Grog, actually. And uh, Mr. Hewitt partook of it. He drank from a Stetson. He has a Stetson somewhere. It's not here in his nerve center here in Southern California. Perhaps it's back in Virginia. But uh, I do have the photos, and those photos are why I am here. I'm convinced. I have not released them to the public, but uh, as long as I get to guest host, they will remain safe and secure. So happy 20th anniversary to Hugh. And Dwayne and Adam and Ben, you guys are, this is a great team. I love coming here. I'm an organization guy. I, I commanded at the battalion level as a, a deputy brigade commander, acting brigade commander. I, I know what it is to have a team that functions. And when I get in here, this stuff just functions. If you're if you're at the universe, I got a rundown. I know what, what we're doing, each of our 12 segments today. I've got a cut sheet with all the little cuts that we will be playing, and uh, it's uh, it, it, it's really a pleasure. So congratulations, you guys. This is a great organization. I'm proud that you let me hang around. That's how I felt in the Army. I'm like, my God, they, 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 they let me hang around with them. Wow, that's, that's pretty remarkable. Uh, and they let me flog my book, The 21 Biggest Lies About Donald Trump and You, which is hilarious and non-FCC compliant. So... Uh, it, it, the Hugh Hewitt radio program taught me about mentioning a book seven times a segment to make sure that you know that that book is out there. And that book being The 21 Biggest Lies About Donald Trump and You. Let's let's get to the rundown. Let's get to the news because there's a lot of stuff going on. First of all, we had a couple of interesting Supreme Court cases yesterday. We'll be talking to Professor Josh Blackman a little later about them to deconstruct this Supreme Court session. Because you guys are actually, I, I, and I sold it to Josh, it was like, Josh, you got to come here. This is a sophisticated audience. Uh, that's one of the great things about the Hugh Hewitt radio program. They don't talk down to you. You can say things like certiorari and stuff. You can say, uh, you know, associate justice. You can say dissenting opinion and people aren't like, what's that? I don't know what that is. I didn't learn that in my... Uh, my, my, my uh, gender marketing degree from Goucher College, I didn't get that there. You guys are smart. You're tuned in. You're hip. You swing. You crazy cats. Don't ever change. Uh, these were some, there are some interesting cases yesterday. We had the uh, subpoena cases for Donald Trump's tax records from a third party, his accountant. And we had a very interesting case 
construing uh, what constitutes Indian land, and it turns out to be a good chunk of Oklahoma is Indian land because uh, the Congress hasn't officially taken it back and broken the treaty. Um, and we'll, we'll probably talk about that with Josh Blackman, but I want to talk about the tax return cases because there's two of them. What happened is Democrats in the House subpoenaed Trump's personal tax records from his accountants for like the last 10 years. And so did the state district, it was local district attorney in Manhattan. He did it too. And the Supreme Court had some inter- had an interesting ruling. And there was an interesting strategy. And here was the strategy that I'm convinced that they used. The strategy being go in to the Supreme Court and say the president has an absolute privilege. That means it, you can't subpoena his records. You cannot ever do it. And, well, that was an unsuccessful argument in that none of the judges, even the dissenters or the, uh, the, 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 the actual opinion, none of them agreed with that. It went 0 and 9. The question was, well, you can do it, but what are the limitations on it? And what happened was it got sent back. Both of them got sent back to the original district court. So uh, for further examination, is it proper? Is it a fishing expedition? Blah, blah, blah. And it got panned as a a huge repudiation and defeat for Donald Trump. In fact, um, Neil K. Tal on MSNBC said it was uh, a real disaster because Trump Trump doesn't want his tax returns to come out because there's supposedly stuff hidden in them. Uh, Let's hear what he had to say. Cut number four, please. Well, I'm glad you started there because I've been listening to our reporting for the last uh, half hour, and I love my MSNBC colleagues and analysts, but I profoundly disagree with almost everything that's been said. This is not a mixed bag or a victory for Trump. Trump shouldn't be happy about this. The fact is he lost. He lost resoundingly seven to two, including his own appointees to the court, Kavanaugh and Gorsuch. The court, by seven justices, rejected his broad claims of immunity. Um, And for a president who's sworn to take care that the laws be faithfully executed in our Constitution, the Supreme Court is saying these are bogus claims. Now, it's true. The case is now going to go back to New York and to the D.C. courts. But the key question is what's left. And with the Manhattan case, very little. Uh, It's very hard, I think, for Trump to assert any form of immunity. With Congress, maybe some more, he's got some more arguments back in the trial court. But nobody thought he was going to win, that the House was going to win immediate release of the tax returns or anything like that. So this is, I think, the best that the challengers thought. The only way in which Trump won anything today is he now possibly can delay this after Election Day and delay getting all the information to New York. But I think that's doubtful. Um, Look, these cases can move very very quickly. Wrong! Wrong, Neil. You are wrong. Of course everybody knew they were going to lose on this argument. That's why they made this argument. So it goes from the trial court to the Court of Appeal to the Supreme Court and takes about two years. Takes about two years. Now it will go back. They will make arguments saying, well, there are various reasons. It's too broad. Uh, it is uh, clearly and manifestly a political attack. It's a fishing expedition, blah, 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 because that is ag- exactly what it is. Because obviously the plan is to get the tax returns, uh, scrutinize them to see if they can find illegality. They are not going to find that. He has battalions of tax lawyers and accountants to make sure, because he's a high-vis guy. He, he's he's going to cross every T, dot every I. And... It's too embarrassing. It's to leak out stuff that's politically embarrassing. And it only matters if it's done before the election. And because the now the decision at the trial court about where to release it, that gets appealed again and then goes back to the Supreme Court. And by then, President Trump has been reelected. That's the strategy. It was an unvarnished win. They pursued an argument they knew was going to lose to kill time. And it worked suckers okay when we come back i want to talk to you about hugh's new article in the washington post great op-ed all the commenters hate it we got a lot of great stuff today on this anniversary show hugh with on the hugh hewitt show